Okay, let's continue uh, talking about tray columns and we are going to define the diameter of a column. So far we have seen how many stages, how many or the efficiency, the material balances, the minimum solvent rate and now it's time to see how to get the diameter of the column, a little bit more on the dimensions. Okay, so they tell you this is a case in which molasses are fermented to produce a liquor containing ethanol. So maybe they are producing some kind of alcohol spirit or whatever. The problem is that this is CO2 rich or the vapor is CO2 rich containing a small amount of ethanol. So maybe this is not good because of course we want the ethanol to be in our spirit, not in our gas. The alcohol will be removed by countercurrent absorption with water in a tray tower. So remember, if this is countercurrent, this should look something similar to this, liquid flow rate, gas flow rate, and the end stages up to M plus one. Okay, so they tell you the gas inlet, which is here, the rate is 180 kilomole per hour at this temperature and pressure. Molar composition is mostly CO2, and a small amount of ethanol. Remember that the ethanol must be recovered. The idea, the required recovery of the alcohol is to at least get 97%. Of course, we know that we will prefer 100%, but maybe because the mass transfer has some effects or maybe the typically this, these operations are very asymptotical. It is very easy to get maybe to 50% and then to get to 90% is a little bit harder but then 90 to 95 is super hard and then 95 to 97 is super hard. So maybe that's why they choose 97. Okay, the solvent is going to be pure liquid water. Remember that ethanol is very soluble in water and CO2 is not that soluble in water. So this is a good solvent choice. Temperature is given here. The flow rate of the liquid is also given and they tell you this is 50% above the minimum rate for this recovery. Okay, perfect. So let's start working. We got a design of, wait, actually before starting, they have extra recommendations for alcohol absorbers, Kisser, the 92 stated that the foaming factor, which we are going to be using, is about 0 0.9. The liquid surface tension is approximate 70 Dean per centimeter for water ethanol mix, maybe the average. We gotta assume, or they recommend us to take the diameter of the orifice to be about five millimeters, which is a half a centimeter, or a, maybe a fifth of an inch. They use equilateral triangular pitch, so remember that triangular means this, and the distance between each other is 15 millimeters between hole centers. Well, actually. This is not 50, so forget the the inch and centimeter. This is not half a centimeter. Actually, this is 120 of the centimeter. Okay, the, then we gotta, okay, stainless steel, blah, blah. Okay, thickness. Remember that we might use thickness of the tray. If we have the tray, remember that there is certain thickness, which is two millimeters. And we gotta design this for the 80% approach of fluid velocity. Now this fluid velocity guys, please do not confuse it because this is percentage. This is not the same as 50% above the minimum liquid rate. So this is the minimum amount of solvent required and this is the maximum amount for fluting. So the two different things, they might confuse you. I've seen students which they confuse the percentages because they make kind of similar, they are talking about fluting, liquids, percentage, maybe sounds kind of tricky, it is not. Okay, now the solution, first get the VGF factor, remember that for this we will require this C constant, which is here, depends on the foaming, on the surface tension, depends on the geometry, the size of the tray, the holes, and so on. So before because we already have the densities of the liquids and gas we need to calculate c so c is the focus of this uh, exercise okay first things first we gotta calculate fst surface tension factor so we got 
this expression, we know that 17 per centimeter, we can plug it in directly. This 20 is based on that, those units. And then we get 1.285. What's next? The FF, which is right here, is the foaming factor. It is directly given, 90% or 0.9. And then, let me see what we have here. We gotta calculate the total x value, and remember that the x value is not the same as, as this one right here, which is VGF. Kind of similar, but they are not the same. Remember that x is defined as the flow parameter, which is the liquid flow rate, gas flow rate, the density ratios to the 0 0.5 power. So first things first, we gotta calculate L and G. These are given, so no need to calculate anything, and we can already perform this side of the equation. Now, how do we get L? L is given here. Is the total amount of flow rate of the liquid. Change that to mole or to mass because these are based on mass. And then change that to seconds. So we have kilograms per second. Do the same for the gas. We have 180 kilomole per hour. Change that to mass. Remember that these are based per mass. If you use it per mole, you're going to have a error, especially because they have different molar uh, weights and this is based on mass. So the correlation or the flow parameter is based per mass. So keep going and we will, we will get this value and this value, which is right here and right here. So I, I did nothing special. I only changed seconds to hours sorry, hours to seconds, and I change kilomole per hour to gram mole. And after that, doing this operation, the X flow uh, parameter, I see that this is way below this value. So the recommended ADAT ratio is 0 0.1. And for anything above this, the FHA value, or the recommended FHA value is one. Here it is. Anyway, let's continue now to calculate the CF parameter. CF parameter, where is it here? It's right here. We need to calculate this. We calculate the surface tension, the foaming factor, and now the geometrical uh, appearances. And now CF. CF is calculated via this, which is calculated the same time here. Now, recall that we already have X factor or flow parameter, so no need to do that much calculations. Now, let's see what do we need here. In order to calculate CF, I need to have alpha and beta values. In order to have alpha and beta values, I gotta have the trace spacing. And in order to get the trace spacing, guys, remember that I gotta know the diameter of my tower because the larger the diameter, the more spacing I require. So there are two ways we can do this. We can guess and then see if we are right or the most formally known iteration. We can assume one value, one value sorry, and then calculate and see if this diameter is correct. If it is not, then we go upwards. If it is now not correct, then downwards. Okay, let me clean this up. The typical way to calculate is maybe one meter, three meter. It's kind of hard to guess, but definitely go, I, I prefer going for three meters. Uh, and for three meters, you have 0 0.6. But in this specific case, I use this one right here. So it will be a good exercise for you to assume this is three meters and therefore use 0 0.06 meters. What you're going to find out later on is that your first iteration was incorrect and that you need to adjust your value. The following guess, the perfect guess will be one meter. And then you will see that you need a trace spacing of 0 0.5 meters. And simply you will see this specific case. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so let's get alpha given the trace spacing of 0 0.5. You get this. Let's get beta. You get this. Let's substitute alpha, beta, and x value, which we already have it, 0 
you get this value 0 0.0791 now we're ready to substitute everything into this equation we got cf we got ha forming factor and surface tension surface tension is a little bit high forming factor 90 ha too low to be considered and cf is very low what we get is this experimental factor and now guys remember that actually what we wanted was the superficial velocity so let's do it substitute c this is meter per second this is going to cancel units kilogram per cubic meter cancels out doing the operation you get that the superficial velocity of the gas is 2.07 now very important to see guys that if you get something about maybe eight meters per second or above you get something of two digit number this is definitely not likely the best operation you either got an error or the recommended operations are incorrect okay but we're not done guys this is not the diameter this was just the superficial velocity the good thing on having the superficial velocity is that it's much easier to relate to the diameter given the diameter and the superficial velocity so let's calculate the volumetric flow rate and this is given here with the ideal gas law we get that the PV equals NRT solving for the volumetric flow rate you got the total moles of gas flowing this is the ideal gas constant total temperature divided by the total pressure you get this value right here this is cubic meters per second Recall that we wanted to operate at 80% flooding. So the flooding factor will be F equals 0 0.80. The superficial velocity was calculated already. And this factor, the ADHT is here. Very small, 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.90. Well, this is backwards and p is well you know p already and finally to get the diameter guys remember the correlation we got the volumetric flow rate yes four times the volumetric flow rate do we got the flooding factor f yes it's 0.80 do we get the superficial velocity b g f yes it goes here so we got the 1 minus ADAH, which is here, yes, 0.90. And we have the P value, which is actually incorrect. This goes to the left. And we need, don't forget to power this to the 0 0.5. I got the value pretty near to 99, 0 0.99, which is one meter. Guys, I, I typically start with a three meter diameter so i didn't predict this i already knew the value so i didn't want it to make two iterations but if you were to calculate 0 0.6 meters you will have a different diameter and if this was true it will not make sense that if you have this trace spacing if you have maybe five meter you gotta increase the, the spacing if you were to have 0 0.5 meters you were to decrease the spacing so that way you will have to repeat everything from here but anyways we are done guys hopefully you like this uh, diameter calculation for trace columns because we are going to be going for the pressure drop which typically is based on diameter as well